time now to take a look at what's grabbing headlines here in France. Lots of focus on today's EU summit in Bratislava, a summit organized for the first time without the United Kingdom. That's right, Nancy. Uh, and uh, the Figaro is pretty pessimistic about this EU summit. It must be said if we take a look at the front page. They're saying this is a summit to try and save Europe. For now, the EU is out of order because of the fallout of the Brexit and uh, it's being knocked around by the migrant crisis. Inside, Le Figaro says that the 27 remaining members are searching for ambition. They're trying to find new ideas to essentially jumpstart the uh, the union. And uh, Lizeku agrees with this analysis. The business paper today says that this is a life-saving operation. It's essentially CPR for the uh, European Union that is riddled with doubt uh, in the wake of all the events, but also trying to press ahead. Now, uh, Lizeku says that it's paramount for the EU to have a successful uh, summit because after the Brexit, it's very important for the 27 EU members to win back the confidence of EU citizens. But other uh, papers are more hopeful that the EU, EU will be able to bounce back? That's right. If we take a look at La Croix, that's the Catholic paper, they're actually quite hopeful that the EU is going to manage to survive this storm. You can see they're focusing on three projects to rebuild Europe. Uh, and uh, La Croix inside, inside agrees with the analysis of the other papers I was telling you about, Le Figaro and Les Echos. It says that, yes, the EU is still out of breath following the shock of the Brexit, and the European project really needs to be jump-started. But there are many ways to do this. Uh, and you can read more about it inside. How can we rebuild Europe? Well, according to La Croix, we really need to focus on three priorities, uh, security, growth, and youth. These are the three ways that Europe will be saved. Let's move on to another big story in the press today. After years of delays, the British government has given the go-ahead for the Hinkley Point nuclear power station. That's right. And this is very good news for France, of course. Uh, it was very eager for this deal to go through. Let's take a look at Les Eco, the business paper. It's, it's on their front page today. They're talking about how this giant contract is actually going to save France's nuclear industry. So you can see it's quite a big deal. This 21 billion euro contract is being financed by the Chinese government, but the bulk of it uh, is being financed by EDF, the largely state-owned French energy giant. Now, it's good news for France because it's uh, reportedly going to create 4,500 jobs here in France. That's according uh, to the government. Now, Les Echos, uh, inside in their editorial, really applaud the UK for finally giving the green light to this uh, project. Uh, and it says that, you know, this happened after a very sensible debate that wasn't polluted by ideology. And sure, Nuclear energy isn't the renewable energy dream of environmentalists, but it, uh, you know, even though it's not very popular, it is the best choice for the UK, at least in the short and in the medium run. Uh, and politicians made a real rational choice, according to Dizicu, that will benefit the UK in the long run, because once completed, this plant will produce 7% of British energy, which is quite a big amount for just one plant. Uh, and so you can see in the, the title of their, edi their editorial today in Les Echos is, you know, we in, here in France should be inspired by the pragmatism of uh, British politicians. Okay, and a word on French politics now. Former President Nicolas Sarkozy is in full campaign mode and apparently uh, is making gains in opinion polls. That's right. According to the most recent polls, he's actually neck and neck with his rival, Alain Juppé, who had been in the lead up until now. Now, what you can see here uh, is an article in Le Figaro that's focusing on a TV show he appeared on yesterday. You can see that screen grab. It's called The Political Show, and it was quite a hotly anticipated appearance by uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, and he certainly was in full campaign mode during this interview. Uh, he said he wanted to talk to all French people. He wants to be the candidate that protects people. Uh, and apparently, according to Le, Le Parisien, uh, Alain Juppé is starting to get annoyed that uh, Nicolas Sarkozy is stealing the media spotlight. You can see the title of this article, Juppé perd son sang froid. He is starting to lose his cool. Uh, Le Parisien reports from behind the scenes uh, that Juppé is tense and irritable, which is quite a stark contrast to the way he has appeared this summer. He's been really relaxed over su the summer, very comfortable 
uh, in his lead compared to Nicolas Sarkozy. Well, Le Parisien says that his zen is being seriously tested by Sarkozy and journalists who tend to only ask him about Sarkozy. And apparently this is really starting to get on his nerves. Uh, and also the fact, of course, that Sarkozy is eating away at his lead in the polls. I well, can understand why he's getting a little annoyed. <laughs> All right, so Sarkozy, Sarkozy and Juppé aren't the only ones hoping to win the uh, primary for Les Républicains in November. L'Opinion focuses also on another candidate who's set to reveal his political program this weekend. That's right, that's Bruno Le Maire. Uh, he's holding a, a rally uh, this weekend to motivate his troops and reveal his presidential program, which apparently is 1,000 pages long. He has a lot of ideas on how to change France. You can see here on the front page of L'Opinion, Le Maire, Le Vatou, Essentially, he's putting all his chips in. He's playing all or nothing. He's younger and not as experienced as Nicolas Sarkozy and Alain Juppé, but he really could shake up the duel between the two. And I like this cartoon here on the front page. You can see Nicolas Sarkozy and Alain Juppé depicted as these, these old elephants with a lot of experience. And Bruno Le Maire there, that little teeny mouse uh, saying boo. Uh, and they're saying, what, what does he want? Well, perhaps he could end up scaring them in the end. Well, we all know that mice can scare elephants, <laughs> right? Okay, well, let's end with Le Parisien, which is focusing on the French school system. That's right. Let's take a look at the front page of uh, Le Parisien Aujourd'hui en France. They're talking about uh, inégalité uh, scolaire, l'échec français. Essentially, when it comes to scholastic inequalities, France is failing. Now, this is a really interesting report that uh, comes in the wake of an OECD report. It's an annual report on education. Uh, and inequalities are a major challenge in French schools, according to uh, this, uh, this annual report. If we take a look at the results of this report, there's actually an interesting graphic uh, inside Le Parisien, which focuses on, for instance, math results uh, for 15-year-olds. Now, uh, you can see that graphic right there in the middle, Students from low-income families in France uh, come in at number 27 out of 34 countries. Uh, so that's quite low compared to other OECD countries. Number one is South Korea. Now, but if you look at students from wealthy families, France comes in at number eight, so quite a lot higher. Interesting to note that South Korea still comes in at number one. But Le, Le Parisien says that, you know, these results are really alarming because, uh, you know, school used to be an elevator for kids, smart kids, regardless of their socioeconomic background. And clearly what we now have in France is kind of a two-speed school where Poor kids uh, essentially get left behind while rich kids succeed. Uh, and Le Parisien is really alarmed by the results of this report and says it's serious time that we, uh, the, well, it's time that we seriously uh, renovate French schools, you know, reform them so that this two speed system doesn't exist anymore. Quite enough, as we say. <laughs> a universal problem, rich and the poor. That's Florence Villeminot. Thank you very much for the press, French press, this morning.